this is part two of my video series where we build a to-do application in swift by the end of this video we will be building this screen this home screen right here which has a table view and we learn how to fill it with some data we learn how to link storyboard files to code files and we will also be setting up the mvvm architecture in our application so let's let's continue from where we left off in the last video in this tutorial we will be let's see so in the last video we saw that this is the default template which xcode gave us okay it has a few things what you need to know about is this main file which is actually a storyboard file so if you click on it it's gonna in it's gonna open a visual representation of an iphone okay now the first thing which you need to know is in ios development every screen is a view controller okay so this what you see right here is a visual representation of a view controller okay so you can add different components such as labels buttons uh and different these are other components in here into this view controller and then you would have to link this view controller into the code file which is a view controller dot swift file view controller dot swift file which will have the declarations of all these various components okay here you can specify the different actions associated with these components as well as the various you can modify these components as you wish okay so first thing is first thing which we will do is we will organize these files according to some sort of architecture pattern okay so that we can give this project some sort of structure so when our app our application is very small now but as our application grows in size as we add more screens to our applications as it grows as we add network calls as we add different images it's going to get a lot larger than what it is and large apps if we don't control them they can get very difficult to handle okay so in this video tutorial what we will do is we are going to follow the mvvm architecture pattern where we essentially classify the components into the view model and the view model uh, compo uh, view model modules okay more on this on the next section segment of let's have a look at what the mvvm architecture stands for in mvvm what we exactly do is we the view is the interface which the user interacts with essentially in our application it will be the list of tasks okay now the view will interact with the view model layer which is the only layer capable of modifying the model which is the template for the data or the data itself okay so once we modify the template we send a call back to the viewer the view uh, which basically which essentially uh, refreshes the view and it displays the new data okay that's how that's the basic overview of how mvvm works i can link a few resources in the description if you want to check out more as discussed in the previous section let's make the groups now first we'll make a new group let's call it view another group view model and finally another group for model view controller dot swift will go under view fine now we have our groundwork ready so this view controller let's link it to our view controller let's embed this in a navigation controller so that we can get the title bar okay click the title bar select prefers large title so that we can get a big title here right let's give it a title called to do app let's add a let's add a bar button item uh, 
right bar button item this will be called add okay let's create a table view drop it here we can get rid of this label now we don't need it let's add some constraints let's give it 10 margin on all sides okay now i think dynamic prototypes let's increase it by one our prototype cell let's make it subtitle it's a given it's a predefined template now we link these things to our view control what shift let's get rid of this so let's create an ib outlet view which will be of type UI table view then we have and that's about it so we don't need anything else we can also keep a uh, action for our add button so just the syntax which I'm following this is the usual syntax syntax since the story board is also called an interface builder so an outlet will be called an IB outlet and any action which we receive from a button will be called IB action okay so let's continue since we have this we need to link these to our components in the app so here right click it and then we will link this here and let's add button link it Wait a second the add button we will link it with this and the okay the cell let's give it a identifier which is very important and we can modify the size of these uh, values we can mo modify the size of the text I'll give it a size of 14 and semi bold and the subtitle I can make it 12 and regular all right so with this we are good to go let's put some now for the table view we will be needing to assign it delegate to self table view dot data source will also be self because that's what the data source is cannot assign value of type view controller to type ui table view delegate and the same goes for EPI table view data source. To resolve these errors, what we do is we conform to two protocols UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. And we, when we conform to these protocols, we also have to override two functions. First one is number of rows in section, which defines, which basically defines the number of rows that will be there in the section of the table view and we need to define the cell for row at because the cell which will be displayed in the table view so now let's return a random value now let's return one and let's create a cell it's table view table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier cell remember we gave the cell which we made in the storyboard an identifier called cell we are using the same thing here so, so that means we want to create that same cell here and it will be for the index path the current index path and we return 
the cell okay so if we run this app now if we try to run this app now it should show us uh, the table view with the single cell which will have the default stubs in it of title and subtitle okay so in the meantime while it is compiling let's create the variable for data so our uh, let our data what if you remember what we had in our finished application we had a list of tasks which had the task name and the timestamp for each task okay for so in this place instead of title we have to show the task name and instead of subtitle we have to show the timestamp of when the task is up uh, when the deadline of, of the task is so to do this what we do is we create a model let's create a new file let's make it a swift file let's call it task let's create so in task we will be creating a class task of type ns object the task will have a name which is a string let's give it a default value of an empty string and a time which will also be a string our time will be a date okay since we're using realm at this point what we can do is we can import realm swift so that the data automatically gets added to our uh, local database and for realm to work we need to also add these two variables two keywords before the variable so this is just typical syntax you can refer the realm documentation for this but this is how it works but now this is our model so we will be building so in here our data is going to be an array of tasks so here we initialize a new empty array and here now I can create since it is let's give it a task. So let's create let's add some tasks here. constructor function which takes name and a time all right now that we have the constructor we can just create this list of tasks so let's create a task name suppose give it my name oh sorry let's give it task one let's give it the current time okay let's make two such tasks let's call it task two and we should be good to go so now instead of uh, returning the hard coded value can take the um, count of data and here in cell we can uh, 
let's we can give the text label as data index path dot row because that's the index of that specific row and that name and we can give the cell dot subtitle label dot text will be dot row dot time so now the time is actually in date format so we have to convert it into a string first so for that we need a date formatter let's create a date formatter first date format let's give it date month year and hour minutes and seconds fine so we can simply time string equals date formatter and we access the string from and this instead of date we just put this value and now we can just show this time string here all right so this should give us okay that should fix this error yeah it's called detailed text label so with this I believe this error should be gone let's build this and it's launching and now we should see two cells so we should see two rows the task name will be task 1 the timestamp is current timestamp which is 1st March 10 3 p.m. it's so correct so guess the date is the same it's task 2 now we have two cells here and now our initial table view is ready so I believe the video is getting too long now so I'm going to be continuing with this in the next video so I'm putting the resources which you need in the description so thank you for watching I hope to see you in the next video